Hi everyone, my name is Melissa. In this video, we'll revisit a topic I covered earlier about how to unpivot multiple column pairs in Power Query using list.zip. A member raised a question on the Enterprise DNA forum on how to make that method dynamic. you find a link to the first video below in the description. If you haven't seen that yet, please do. It introduces how list.zip works. I've labeled this advanced because we'll be writing a number of M functions and some of those might even be new to you. With that said, let's go over the Power Query. As you can see, this data has already been transformed into a proper tabular format suited for analysis. That process, although very important, won't be covered here, but we'll briefly go over each step. In the source step, we see a constant repetition of the value pairs, so the hours and contacts for each of the attributes listed above. We remove some top rows, remove the empty columns, cleaned up our text values and filled them down. Then we transposed our data, removed the empty record, merged column one and two, cleaned our text values again and transposed our data back. We created that custom step that we'll examine in more detail extracted the values from our list, and then finally changed the type. So I'll extend the formula bar so we can look at the entire code. The thing we're interested in here is the list.zip function. Brief recap, it takes a single list as a parameter and then returns a list as a result. We see that this single list in this instant contains three separate lists. If we examine the first list, that's this one. It contains hard-coded attribute names, just text values that were typed in. The second list contains hard-coded column references for the hour values. And the final list here contains hard-coded column references for the contact values. List.zip then takes an element from each of these three lists and combines them based on their position in a new list. For example, each first element from those lists get combined into a new list. The same happens for all values listed second in that list, and so on. Hard-coded values can be a concern if the attributes are likely to change over time. So if next time not all items are present, or new items exist, you can get into trouble. So how do we make this dynamic? First thing I do is step through the code to see if there's a place where we can pick up those attribute values without having to design a separate step to accomplish that. So we're going to step back through the code, select this step, and see if we can pick up those attributes. And this remove a null step is perfect. You can see that it lists all the attribute values here in column one. We can use the user interface to extract them. So right click that header and down below select add as new query. We get this list and that's good news because we want to replace that hard coded list we saw earlier with a dynamic one. All we need to do is tidy up the values. Let's start by removing those nulls. So inside the formula bar, We'll add list.remove nulls. Press OK. All items are repeated, and that's because of the value pairs. It's listed once for the hours, and then again for the contacts. To remove those duplicates, we can add list.distinct. So inside the formula bar, We'll add list.distinct. And press OK. Now we've created this logic and all we have to do is copy it and paste it back to our sample query. So inside the formula bar, copy the entire M code we see here. Press Ctrl C to copy. Let's step back to our sample query. Open the advanced editor and create a new variable name. 
let's call it attribute list. Paste in the code we copied, so control V to paste that in. Don't forget a comma at the end. And I'm also going to copy that variable name to avoid any typos and press done. In the applied steps pane, we now have our attribute list. So if we click on that, we see our values. Perfect. Step back to our custom step. And here inside list.zip, we can replace that first list by our variable name. So just paste that in and press OK. Now let's take a closer look at the second list. We know it references column names and each of those column names start with the same attribute that we already have in that list, followed by a space and the text hours. In part, we already have what we need. We just need to add a suffix to each item. So let's move back a step. So we can see all of our column headers here and add a custom column to create some logic. It's just a temporary column, so we don't need to give it a proper name. We'll remove it once we're done. To change the values in a list, we can use the list.transform function. So list.transform. And what do we want to transform? That will be the values in our attribute list, right? So I'm going to paste that in, control V. So here in the headers, we see that the text values starts with a capital and then the rest is lowercase, right? Our attribute contains only capitalized words. So we have to transform that text value as well. Each text the proper And we can use the underscore to access each item of the list. And we'll add that suffix. So ampersand space and hour. Closing parentheses and press OK. We get a list value in our column, right? And it doesn't matter which, which one you select, but just click off to the side in the white space in any of them here. And then below, we see a preview of that list that we've created. So you see that we have those column headers. They're now proper cased, so that matches the column headers we see here. With this list, we now have the means to identify the fields from our record that we want to access. So let's open our custom column dialog box again. And add record.select fields. Here it states that it wants a record as a record. We can use that underscore to access the current record that we're on and then fields as any we've given it a list with all those field names right so add a closing parentheses and press ok so we no longer have a list but we now get a record let's click off to the side in the white space again to view the contents of that of that record and here we see that that lists the record field names and the record field values. But we're only interested in the record field values, right? So we need to extract that. So let's move back to our custom column dialog box. And add record.field values. Closing parentheses. So here you see that we have 
129 and then a couple of zeros, press OK. We now get a list again, so no longer a record. We click off to the side in the white space again. And you see that we now have a list with just those values. So that's looking good. Let's copy the full logic that we've created, except for that last closing parentheses. So from record field values all the way to the end, minus that last closing parentheses. Press Control C to copy. Now we can remove our temporary column because we no longer need it. So delete. We're back to our custom step. Let's expand our formula bar again and select our second list. So I'll press down shift and select the end and control V to paste it in. Press OK. To create a list with the record field values for the contacts, all we need to change is the suffix. So we can select that last list as well. Paste in the code again. And instead of hours, let's change this to contacts. Press OK. So no errors, that's looking good. Perfect. This is now a dynamic solution. So if a new attribute comes in, it will automatically be picked up by the attribute list. And when an item no longer exists, it won't be present in that list. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA channel. Thank you so much for watching. All the best.